Welcome to Worship with Trinity Lutheran Church here in Blue Earth, Minnesota. I'm intern pastor Sarah Krolak, and I have some announcements before we begin our worship today. For our children and youth, there are lots of things going on this summer. We have Cooking with Jesus, June 14th through 18th. Family Sunday School, June 6th, July 18th, and August 15th and day camp July 12th through 15th. And for all of those things, you can find more information uh, in our newsletters and in our bulletins. Continue to check the newsletter for updates on our COVID guidelines. As things change, we will be posting all of those changes in the newsletter. Our Wednesday night worship for the summer begins on June 16th and that will be every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And finally, congratulations to the class of 2021. We are so thrilled for you and can't wait to see what you do next. Know that your Trinity family is praying for you and cheering you on through whatever comes next. And with that, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. All powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 130, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. 
My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning. More than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. For our children's message, I invite you to focus in on our baptismal font here at Trinity, and we're going to talk about baptism. Now, maybe you recall people telling you that you were baptized, or you've had a chance to witness a baptism, or you've heard about the promises of baptism that are for all of God's children, that we are washed in the promises and the love of God. It's a visible way for us to see the promises that are with us always. So I have a question for you. What do you need for a baptism? How about, let's start with the obvious. What do you need for a baptism? Feel free to call it out. Yes, water. Any other things that you need for a baptism? Hint, the word and faith, the people. The people bring the faith when we have a baptism, the Holy Spirit at work in their lives. And something we do in a baptism is we profess our faith. We confess our faith together. And we not only say, yes, what we're going to do, what we promise to do, what we believe, but we also say no to some things. We renounce some things. Can you say that word? Feel free to repeat after me. Renounce. Renounce. Yeah, renounce means to um, turn away from, to, to set aside, to reject something. Now, you maybe have had this experience in your life where you, in order to say yes to something, you had to say no to something. Perhaps you had a schedule where you had two places you could be and you had to say yes to something and no to another. Well, in baptism, and as we profess our faith as people who follow Jesus, in order to say, yes, I want to follow Jesus. Yes, I want to do God's word. Yes, I want to hear what God is saying. We have to say no to some things. We have to quiet down the other voices. We have to say no to sin and no to the things that separate us from God. And so I want to read to you the words that we use in baptism and see if you can hear that word renounce. The pastor says, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? And the congregation says, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? The congregation responds, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? And the congregation says, I renounce them. And in doing that, we create space in our lives for God to dwell. Space for our lives for God to be present with us. Space in our lives to listen to God. And when it gets hard, when it gets really confusing and we don't know what to do, we need to do what Jesus did in our gospel reading today. What the people did, they sat down with Jesus and listened to him, leaned in and was, were present so that they could understand. Now, there were some people that didn't understand. The religious leaders, Jesus' own family, they were confused about what Jesus was saying and doing. And they had a choice. They could sit down with the people and learn more, or they could say no and kind of walk away. In our lives of faith, it can get really hard. It can re get really complicated to know what to say yes to, what to say no to. And when it gets hard, we need to think about and stop and pause and listen to perhaps hear what God is saying to us. It's a good time for prayer. It's a good time for leaning into the word, a good time for leaning into those promises of baptism to help show us the way. And so this week, when you have to think about things that you need to say yes to or no to, I invite you to also lean in to see 
what God might be saying and guiding you along the way. Let's have a word of prayer. Feel free to repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for guiding us when ways are easy and when ways are hard. Help us to pause, to lean in, and to trust. Help us to say yes to you and the lives you call us to. And give us good courage to say no when we need to. And all God's children said, Amen. The gospel for this service comes from the Gospel of Mark, the third chapter. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called to them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. But his end has come. No one can enter into a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and of whatever blasphemies they utter. Whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever been in a store where you see a parent with their young child and the child says it just like they see it? They point a finger and say, someone's hair looks funny, or that smells weird, or why is so-and-so doing that? And the parent, embarrassed, either quickly moves to the next aisle or covers the child's mouth or apologizes quickly and finishes whatever they're doing. As I think of those experiences, I think of this gospel reading 
where Jesus' family tries to rein him in. You see, Jesus' very family, those closest to him, realize things are not as they would hope them to be. Jesus is speaking up and speaking out about what he came to do. He's openly healing and casting out demons. And our gospel reads, for some people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. Now one way the Greek reads is that Jesus, was, Jesus' family was trying to retain him. It could also be read as arrest him. They were truly trying to rein him in. But in Mark, the earliest and shortest of the Gospels, Jesus is being simply who he is. The Son of Man, the Son of God, come to bring good news to all people. And as we travel through Mark, in the first couple chapters, it is those who are sick and demon-possessed that see most clearly who Jesus is. While others, his disciples, the scribes, his family included, feel like he's crazy. He's doing amazing things, and the crowd is leaning in. They are so excited to hear him. They crowd around him. They're not even thinking about eating anymore, giving up the necessities just so they could simply, simply be near him. These particular verses are often paired with Genesis 3, where Adam and Eve eat of the fruit of the tree, and Adam blames Eve, Eve blames the snake. And the snake, in those words, they said, if you eat of it, you will die. That isn't exactly what happens. God watches over them. God forgives them. God gives them a vocation and lifts them out of the garden. And they do not die in that day. But instead, they lived watched over by a God who cares for them. Now, now in this time, Blame is still around. We don't have to look very far to see where people place blame on a person or on stereotypes in order to just gloss over a situation. And so we are still in need of forgiveness and of God's presence to help us live aright. I don't know about you, but I find some verses in this gospel reading very comforting. Like verse 28, Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. And the verse after that very disturbing. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. I once had someone explain it like a fire department analogy. God will not force God's redemption but knows that we do indeed need it. And so it's there, ready and waiting. Our first glance at this gospel, it may seem like there is not much good news here. And yet there is. When God, Jesus, speaks of that strong man and how to overcome, we have an opportunity to think of that in our own lives. What do we need to be bound in order to be free? I think we can think of things in our lives that we may just assume will always be there. Hunger, violence, racism, derision, division. And yet, good news comes. Jesus is the one who makes the dead living, the sick healed, the outsiders into insiders, beloved and cared for. If that is the case, then God can loose all that which binds us and things can be different. So perhaps it is time to lean in like the crowds, whether we feel like the scribes or Jesus' family, to lean in and wonder just where the good news is for us. What is being bound and set free and what we can do to be bearers of that in the world around us.
Perhaps it's time to get a little crazy, to realize the power that Christ can have on our community, our neighbors, and those yearning for freedom. Perhaps it's as simple as talking to someone and about someone. Perhaps seeing someone as part of a system of struggles rather than placing blame. Whatever it may be, may we have the opportunity to lean in and be the good news wherever we are as well. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things external, that in Thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In this season after Pentecost, we join in a prayer of thanksgiving for Holy Communion. Longing for the day when we are gathered around the table of our Lord in anticipation of the feast to come, we give thanks for the gift of Holy Communion. Through the gifts of bread and wine, you nourish and strengthen your church, O Lord. Through the gathering of saints around the table, you bind us together in your love. Through the feeding of your people, you strengthen us for service. Through the outpouring of your love, our sins are forgiven. As we wait for the day when we will gather around your table again, fill our hearts with hopeful longing and open our spirits to your presence through the proclamation of your word as we look forward to the feast to come. Amen.
Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.